Did you do anything for Valentine's Day? No. No, well... Where were I, you? I went to San Diego and I went... My San Diego fun was there. <laughs> 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 the life of a flight attendant. Oh. <laughs> this is the Deanna Cruz Unfiltered Podcast. Today, my guest is the one, the only, Jackson. Hey. Hey, welcome. And a lot of people may not know you. They're because, like, who the hell? Who's this? Jackson? Like Michael Jackson? I thought he died. Um, <laughs> Listen. Hey. Um, so Jackson and I uh started radio together back in like probably 10 years ago, 12 Longer. years ago. Yeah, yeah, about 12. We worked at a station in Fairhaven, Massachusetts called Fun 107. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember that was like the second stop of my like radio career. So I originally started in Albany, New York, um, at Jams 96.3. And then um I brought it a little closer to home at in Fairhaven. Mm -hmm. Um and then I met you, but I want to say when I first started there, like that first week or two, they told me about you. Uh, and I was like, pissed because you were taking my time slot. I was filling like, in for you on a shit. Saturday. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was filling in on a Saturday for you because you were on vacation. You were in Europe somewhere. Oh, whatever. And then um, and I, I was like, fine, okay, yeah, I'll fill in. And then I remember you came in, and I want to say you like – just Bogged turned in. up the music really, really loud and started dancing. Oh my gosh, it's my jam! <laughs> and I was like, who is this? And we started dancing. And then we got to know each other. And every time the the thing would be like, you would come in after me, right? Yep. So I would, mm -hmm. I would do a Saturday. You would three have a better seven. shift. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you came in from like 7 to midnight maybe. The only reason you got that shift is because you had boobs. Uh, I know. <laughs> hold on a second. Wait a second. But you came in from seven a minute. But I thought it was because it was the uh, like techno party yes, Saturday it was night a mix show. It yeah, was a yeah. mix show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are you talking about? That was a prime spot. But I, I remember us because I came on after you. We would talk. We would do this crosstalk thing like this. Yes. And we'd, we'd get yelled at. We'd get yelled <laughs> we at, but we're like, that. we want to do a morning show together. What are you talking about? Come on. Da, da, da. You know, remember? <laughs> yes. So, um, but then you would come in and uh, it, it then became routine. I think you would give me a hug and with one hand, you would undo my bra. Yep. And I was like... <laughs> Oh, oh, the resident, the resident. Jester. The <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Uh, so yeah, he, until this day, there hasn't been one guy who's been able to do that. Yeah. A straight guy. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> straight Wait guy. Wait a minute. He's been able to undo, hold, the hold undo my bra. You've had other gay guys undo your bra? Because now I'm pissed. I'm going to get jealous. Like, <laughs> you I'm, thought I'm, that was our thing? <laughs> yes. No. I'm mean, um, just joking. No, no, no. But I'm. Um, Actually, I don't think there's been another gay guy okay. who's been able to do that. Okay. Um, but I'm just thinking now, <laughs> as a straight guy, I love hold on. Fumble, space hold on. Right hold on. Now. fumble with. Are it you all talking the time. about guys hugging you and undoing your bra, or no. just in any context? I could undo. Both, it, I could undo it right now. You could do it right I could now. too. With the jacket, I've never used two hands for a bra. One hand, he does that all the time. First time, boop, done. Mm. Like he would come in for a hug, I'd forget, and I'm like, ah, why'd you do that? Oh, yeah, and she acts like she has big ones that just fall. And I don't. No, she has I a don't. handful, maybe. I've never said I've never said I had big boobs, number one. That's why we got Cindy on this podcast, okay? Um, oh. I, I've never said, I always say I have a handful. I'm okay with that. And I, I really don't think I, I'd want big boobs. You don't even need honest. a bra. I've, Actually, seen, yeah. I've seen you not wear one. Yeah. Rachel gets mad. Rachel's like my roommate, kind of. And the <laughs> other day, she was like, let's go grab whatever. And I said, oh, I don't have a bra on. She's like, I hate you, you skinny bitch. <laughs> and she's like, you can't tell. And I was like, you can if it's cold out. <laughs> and I'm wearing like a, something, you know. Jeffter's in heaven's right now. <laughs> yeah. he He's like, I've never seen this part of Deanna. <laughs> it takes Jackson <laughs> to bring it out. But so we used to work at the station at Fun 107, uh, Fairhaven, Mass. It's about 45 minutes from Providence, mm -hmm. right? Um, and 45 minutes from Boston. And that's how we initially, we met each other. And then I went on and I worked in Providence Market for the longest. And I want to say when I got hired full-time in Providence, you were either in Connecticut somewhere. or Richmond. But what I remember was I didn't know my way around Providence, so I would always call you. Yeah. And I'd be like, yo, hey, how do I how do I get here? Oh, I know where that is. And you'd be like, no, you want to get off at that exit? And uh -huh. you would like visualize it yep. and explain it the way I'm used to, which means like buildings. And there's the CVS in the corner. Then take a right and you're going to see Dunkin' Donuts and da da da. You would yep. never be like, and half a mile down, I take a left on like, no. <laughs> it was always visual, like these visual cues. And then you ran Providence. Yeah. You were and the then, one. You were there and then I, when you, I remember when you would come and visit, you'd call me, hey, 
see, how, how do I get to such and such place? Yeah, I'm years what afterwards. Good tonight? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Years <laughs> afterwards, you would call me and say, Hey, what are you doing in Providence? Uh, uh, but you dated, you dated some hotties in Providence. I did, but they weren't from there. Uh, one was from there. The other ones Wait, which from one there. was from there? The one with the good butt? All the guys I dated had great butts. That's true. Yeah. No, that's, that's one no, thing no. that we... Now <laughs> I have to know. Has he seen pictures of the guys you've dated in Seattle? Uh, no. Because no. I want to know what he thinks of the guys that I've heard about. Or uh, the guys no, that I've met. No, he hasn't. No, no, no. Because I, hey, I don't have a picture of the last one I dated uh-huh. that lived in Seattle. That's really so I what I want to know. Yeah, I don't but have any. But he did have a nice ass, so he did, you would approve, except it was hairy. I know but, her I mean, type. You, you they look <laughs> good, but they're not marriage material. Yeah. That's what she always dates. <laughs> always. They look good. So far, they aren't even dating material. And well, in Jeff's <laughs> book, they're not dating material. It was well, none well, of no, your business. No, by your definition, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You stopped dating him because it sucked. Yeah. One yeah. part of it sucked. The other one wasn't so bad. Right. Um, but mm. the guys I dated, yeah, so I think it was only. I must say your lips look good. My lips look good? Moisturize. Oh, I just put, you want some? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Here. Just speaking of, Here. you know, things that she likes to suck. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, you remember a few of them that I dated. Mm-hmm. Should we name names? I didn't listen to are this you podcast. Okay? I was going to say, are you okay with that? Yeah. So first, the one you really liked was Mario. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> there's one specific uh, story that comes yes. to mind. You always, I, always can I, can bring I share, it up. Share, share, share it, okay, please. Okay. All right. It. So I, <laughs> Jeff wants to know. It's, it's not really something you're going to enjoy. It's something that the we'll podcast enjoy. is called Unfiltered. We have yeah. to do this. Oh, that's me on a daily. Mm-hmm. Anyways, yeah. so we uh, we were sitting on your couch, totally relaxed. I, I was living in Providence. Providence. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And your cats were all around. But I um, one cat. Yeah, but it was him. You and then me on the couch. Yeah. We were just watching. And I think whatever. we were watching like Grey's Anatomy, like yes. it had first come out or something. <laughs> I'm just laughing because it's so funny. Um, but he didn't have like pajamas or whatever, so we had to borrow yours, and they were mm-hmm. kind of like tightly fit. So obviously because he, they were mine, and right. he has, yeah. and he wasn't wearing any underwear. No, and he didn't want to get up to go to the bathroom <laughs> because he, he knew, yeah, he knew that I would look at his butt. <laughs> <laughs> so he was fine with you. It was me being there. Yeah. So anyways, he did have a nice He had to go to the bathroom, so he got up but walked backwards into the bathroom so I couldn't see his butt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he goes to the bathroom. He comes out of the bathroom, but she goes, wait, did you wash your hands? Did you flush the toilet? And he immediately turns around and walks to the bathroom. And I look at her and I'm like, oh, she did it for me. And we gave me, I gave her a high oh five. And I was like, nice yes. ass- good assist. <laughs> yeah. And so I got to see it and I was like, yep, you did good with that one. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. And I was like laughing. Cause I <laughs> was like, uh, was but awesome. then the other guy, I d- d- hmm, the oh. last guy I dated, did you? When did you meet him? Oh, I don't know. I think it was at a Mexican restaurant. No. Oh, you're talking about the stripper. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, goodness. Good stuff. Oh, God. Mm. <laughs> wait. Wait. Pause uh, for a second. I mean, I, I'd say, so I dated him for a while. A while. Maybe you weren't even living in Providence at the time. You right, were no. in Richmond. No, no, no. Yeah. But when I come to visit, I met him. Yeah, yeah. Met you him. met him. Um, And then, oh, he got so upset. Remember, we went to the Taylor Swift concert. Oh, yeah. You had come to visit. You're like, what are you doing today? I said, I don't have anything planned. You're like, I got tickets to Ed Sheeran. And And we ended up in Taylor Swift's suite. Suite, right. At Gillette. Yeah. 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 Hey, watch your language. (laughs) (laughs) So then we, uh, he got pissed at me over that. But then there was another time where you were like, hey, come in. And you would do this randomly. You're like, yo, fly out to Miami. We're going to go to the Uh, iHeart party, you know, uh, pool party or whatever. And so I decided to go to Miami and meet up up with you. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. And then, I was doing CrossFit at the time too. Yeah, and we were, remember we were like, oh, let's let's, let's pop in bodies. at a gym. No, 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 <laughs> oh, no. let's yeah, pop yeah, in at a gym. Yeah, we yeah. never did. Nope, nope. Yeah, I was like, it's too hot for this. My hair's gonna curl. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then I remember we were shopping, and then he calls me for whatever reason, and then he got pissed off, and, and then you got mad at me. Yes, because I was sitting there going, he sounds like like so insecure, and this guy is a. Uh, a stripper. Right. You shouldn't like, be insecure. I'm like, he he's got a sick body. He's got a good personality, except that he's going psycho right now. Yeah. For no reason. And you're like, what are you doing with him? Why yeah. are you still with him? And I was like, oh, no. like yeah. <laughs> and I stuck with him probably another year after that, a year and a half. And it was purely because he had a nice butt. Hmm. He did have a nice butt. As a matter of fact, I still right. follow him on Instagram. You do? Yeah. Oh. I double tap that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can have him, honey. You can have I him. I am not having your leftovers. <laughs> Although I would. <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> well, it depends on how thirsty you are. Well, I need uh, this water, so. <laughs> that's my water. Watch out my chapsticks on there. 
Oh, uh, I mean, you will it give me whips it. like that? Yeah, if you want some. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was, I'll let you share it. Oh, I'll share it. So this- um, the funniest part, though, is like I try to think about the people you dated and been mm. in relationships with, and I'm like, no one's good. <laughs> well, because you, you know what? <laughs> I, I, you date? I most of the people I've dated are like monthers. Like I've had them for a, for month, a month, and then, and then you're it. done. Yeah, I, re- I, I, I don't know what it is. I think I get sick of of people. <laughs> Of people? Oh, we well, haven't got people. sick of me. No, no, but you like people that I have relations with. I feel like I'm like, okay, goodbye. <laughs> but is it because the sex gets boring or No, because I'm if I'm in control, it should never get boring. It'll be what I want. <laughs> I mean, you're the same way. Don't act like it. Uh-huh. Like you're you're like, no, I want it this um, way. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I've been in relationship for like two years, so it's not like I just leave them like that. Yeah, but you, get, you won't get bored with the sex. As a matter of fact, most of the time that you've broken up with these guys, you're like, oh, but the sex was so good. I miss the sex. No. Nah. Yes. Uh, yes, you have. I have heard that a couple times. Really? Oh, no. With that, that, well, that's separate. <laughs> What's that? I mean, I've heard that from about a couple different guys. Oh, well, I mean, I, I guarantee you that Seattle okay. guys don't live up to her expectations well uh, and i listen maybe <laughs> jeff's was like can i talk can i talk you want to know what? physically i mean but i i just i don't think their tenacity is there for her that's i mean okay I my friend may have grown and changed a little bit so i haven't seen her as much as i used to but yeah i just feel like some of them have to have that tenacity and i don't know that anyone in seattle has been that so I've heard some people that are sweet, but oh, she they are sweet. Yeah, but yeah. she doesn't like sweet. I, I, I want the like, asshole. I dated the asshole. I mean, <laughs> I, I I think I think I'm right. I don't know. Right? You're you're really a pretty classic case, D. Okay, go ahead. Break speaking of break the it D. down. Break it down. <laughs> I just mean the you know the 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 handsome asshole. Oh, so you're saying she's a classic woman, by, now, by like case that she likes bad it, guys. That classic scenario of the woman who likes the the, the bad boys. The, They're the, bad the boys. Stud I wouldn't who, say, the stud who's kind of a dick. Yeah, I would say bad boys. I I would always say like they have to have a little flavor, like a like a Latin flair. Uh, we just Amy and I used to always call it like <clears throat> they need to be attractive but have some flavor. Oh, so almost confident but not conceited or yeah. Okay. Yeah, just have a, a little, little swag. like a little bad boy, like a little. There's something to them that you're like, hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, here's the thing. I'm her gay friend, and I can barely handle her. Uh, shut <laughs> up. That's why you <laughs> stay away. That's why you're like, I, I'm just gonna see you for 17 hours. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's and exactly then, I'll, right. then I'll see you in three months. Okay. That's exactly and I'm right. like, what? <laughs> what did I do to you? Uh, I don't know. You're kind of perfect. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's like my past relationship. Right. The guy I dated that lived in uh, in Europe, right? No. I see him. <laughs> yes. Oh, All right. So <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about this guy for one second, and then I have to bring it back. I know him. The, uh, yes. He's met him. Bro, He's, okay. Have you, you met him? him? I, have, I don't think I've met him. Okay. But let me just say, I probably know more about him than you do, even though you've met him. Sure. Because over the course of the 12 years that I've known her, yeah. mm-hmm. she's only talked about him. Yeah. And she's visited him. And that's another case of me saying, Why? Like, I don't understand why you would date a guy that lives all the way out there who doesn't make any effort to come see you. He, but he did. He did once effort. in the 12 well, years here, that they were in a relationship. You know, like, right. And then both times, I mean, the, what, the last time he didn't, I mean, here's the thing. His <laughs> teeth are messed up. Ah! Oh. I mean, okay, listen, Portuguese people don't have the greatest <laughs> teeth. Bad. But look at Tiana's, look at mine. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Hello. Like my teeth are good, her teeth are good. Mm-hmm. We take care of them at least. Yeah. Right. You're in Europe though; they don't really necessarily take care of their teeth though. Yeah, well, I don't want you to get that. Doesn't make it okay. No, I, I know, and I know, and that was the biggest thing with him. It was he was he would always be like, "I know, I know, you don't like my teeth." And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Can you no. just spend some money on like fixing them? Get veneers?" But then something? he got fat. I heard. I mean, I want to say fat. <laughs> he wasn't he as fit as much. D. No it's way. so funny. Everybody is as It's, as so, as no, it's so funny. Her name is D because it's all about yeah. the D. <laughs> That's what it is. It's all Vitamin about D. The D. It was no. It was when we went to Hawaii. The fact that he couldn't get up to oh, the mountain. Oh, oh, no, I'm talking about to the mountain. Like, the oh, hike. Sh- <laughs> yeah. Um, was like I was like, dude. Yeah. Will you stop smoking? Don't yes. you see your lung? Like you can't get up here because of your lung. Like, Ugh. come on. But you, so me and me and uh. Deanna, I think it was like when you were 28 or something like that, 29, we both 
agreed that oh if by 35 God. she wasn't having a kid that i would mm. we i would donate yeah <laughs> because, all right because I've, I've no i'm at the time i'm sitting there going there's no way that like she would want me like the genes of me but now i'm thinking well maybe she, want, she, would. she, want, she wanted the genes of bruno maybe she would want my genes i, get, I would gladly do that oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, what is one thing uh, we were we were saying this before? Uh, when you picture our friendship, mm -hmm. the first thing that comes to mind, yeah, I, uh, uh, something that happened. Gosh, <laughs> can I, I, I? I have one. Okay, you can uh, go first. I'll go first. Okay, I remember when you were working for um, another airline. Uh huh. Um, you were. I believe you live. I don't know if you lived in Boston or not. No, I was in Providence, but I worked in, out of Boston. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And um, I don't know if I picked you up at the airport. Whatever it was, you were in Boston, and you had to like get, get to work. Uh huh. And I was like, all right, get in the car. And you thought you had like an hour and a half. And uh -huh. when you look, you're like, oh shit, I only had like forty five or twenty minutes, whatever it was, was yeah. to get to the airport. And I think it was for a flight. <sighs> Do you remember this? And I am on Sturo Drive and I'm cutting people off and I, <gasps> oh, you, yeah. you just made it. No, and no, you're no, like, no, yeah, okay, I can wait. always rely on you to get me to the airport yes. on time. So Where I was, were you going? I was going to Denver. I okay. had just gotten a job in Denver Okay. and I was, I, my flight back to Denver and I gotten called while we were on the highway from the airline saying, Hey, yes! are you coming on the flight? Yes. Yes. You're and not was, here yet. Yeah. yeah. And the, your flight leaves. And I was, I was so shocked that that airline had called me to say, Hey, are you coming? Right. Because I was like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm on the highway. And I'm like, wait, doesn't it leave? No. They're like, no, it leaves. I'm like, the Holy. gate closes. This is, a flight you're, this is a flight you're working. No, 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 okay. no, no. I was, I wasn't working for the airline. Oh, I was okay, working okay. for a state radio had station you in bought, Denver. Had you bought this ticket? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I, w I would have had to wait till the next day to go back, and I had to go yeah. to work the next yeah, day. Yeah, what airline calls to see if you're coming? That's what I'm saying. I've never heard of that. Yeah, either. no, they I remember they did. now. They, they did. did call you, and you're like... And I looked at you, and I was like, <gasps> D, hurry Book up. Book it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? You're like, the, the gate's going to call. I was like, oh, I don't know. I know my way around it. But I got on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew my way around, and I still know my way around the uh, Logan International Airport just because... Um, the boss I had at my previous job, Augustine, I remember him, uh, Name would dropper. always try, would always travel and, uh, to Columbia and all this stuff like to Florida. And I would always drop him off at the airport. And I, so I knew, you know, where to stop and where to kind of cut off and where to circle around. Mm -hmm. So it was like, so I was like, okay, don't worry about it. And you made your flight and you made your, yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> that was hilarious. I, so I just think about the times that like, I, I feel like that we've done crossovers like on the radio and yeah. like every time it's been hysterical uh -huh. and like, usually we have to like tell ourselves to stop talking because right. we'll get in trouble. And I just remember those. Trouble. I just remember those. It was always so funny. We, uh, your laugh, like that's all I envision every time we like hang out is like, that's it, so catchy. Like everyone will hear that and recognize it anywhere yeah. they go. I'm trying to think of a time. Like, honestly, there's so many memories. I think we went to, uh, oh, a club. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Richmond and Tracy. Yes. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, this, oh yeah. This is a club. All right. So I lived in Richmond for a little while doing radio for about mm -hmm. eight years. Virginia. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, because there's other Richmonds. Um, and her and her friend Tracy came in because Richmond is popping. Like it's such a cool. It was it was, it was a lot of fun. It's a cool city. I, I think it cool. was a, the second time. I think the first time I went to visit you by, by myself. myself. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the second time I was like, no, Tracy, come along. Yeah. Okay. And so we, I, I was the king of the city, you know, like or I, I could go to all the clubs or whatever. And, and you were hosting a bunch. I was of a gigs. hosting a bunch, yeah. a bunch of clubs too. Matter of fact, I think that Friday night we got there, you mm -hmm. you were hosting a gig. Yeah. And so, but we, it's all downtown. And um, you know, D, she puts on heels. She looks good. Yeah. She struts in them. You know, she doesn't fuck around. Uh, yes. And so Tracy, <laughs> we, I, okay. She, God bless her soul. First she's off, she's always been the ditzy one, though. Like, she, right. and but she, she owns it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she does. Yeah. She's cute and she's fine and she's whatever. But like, I'm sitting here going, and we're watching all these chicks walking around, hot messes, dressed. But Tracy's dressed nice. It's just she doesn't, she can't walk yeah. in heels. Heels. So she's That's the walking worst. like, and I'm like, oh, wait, how is like she a walking? dinosaur. Like, no, like what? a horse almost. Like, you know how like they, yeah. they put their, their foot down and then <laughs> they wait to get their weight down. The and least then they, attractive thing on earth. One. Yeah, yes. Like, yes. I mean, she yes. looks like she might have had some for a couple hours before yeah. she got <laughs> <her heels on. laughs> 
<laughs> it doesn't matter sore. how attractive you are. If you walk like she that, she looks like she was riding happening. a horse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beforehand, okay. I, I mean, she, she was hurting. You could tell she was like hurting. God, dun, dun, I mean, dun, dun, dun. and all you needed was like the sound effects yeah. of her. Yeah. <laughs> and so I intimidated. I intimidated. I imitated her and at home, I, wait at home that night right yes but also on the street and i was like why do you walk like this <laughs> and then i put her heels on and oh, i was no. like now i know why you walk like this <laughs> wait wait the best part of the story is when we got home i think it was that night or the following morning you first off um tracy has the biggest feet of out of all of my friends she <laughs> so was I like a size Aww. 10 I totally fit yeah I, it was 10 to Okay, Jackson puts on her shoes. With wooden floors. With wooden floors <laughs> in his house. Like I said, I think it was after or the next day. And you're like, Tracy, this is how you walk in heels. <laughs> and he walked in heels better than she did. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? And she was like, but she has since gotten better. Oh, um, sure. She looks amazing. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I'm not sure she, ha- you know, she necessarily doesn't fall because she still falls a Did lot. you have practice or were you a natural? No, I didn't. Just natural, I just man. Threw them on. All right. I don't know. Yeah, they were like his size. It gives, I'm like, how are those are those for you right now? Yup. And then he's like taught her. And from that on, from then on, she started learning how to walk in heels. She's like, if a gig I can do it. I, I can do, do it, it, right? <laughs> I was like, Tracy, you can't be wearing those flip-flops. Oh man. Not, not, not with your toes out like that. Oh my no, gosh. No. She was bad. She was real bad. Yeah. But, but she got it together. She got it together. I haven't seen her in forever. Uh, Got it together. The face. The face. Ooh, I Sorry, don't know. Tracy. Tracy, we love you, but if only I, I need to tell you what she's up to. I'll what tell you what you're on a ride back to, to oh, the airport. Not public? Uh, not public knowledge at this time. Is she a stripper? No. The no. next Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to Okay, this Jeff guy is kind of like dorky, but like he stood up and he's got like nice fitting pants on and everything. Uh-huh. What's, go, what, what's his deal? What are you talking about? Well, I'm. Jeff's I'm totally out of shape right now because I can't move. He's got uh, a your, knee. your butt looked great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> These I, are my I loose Jeff, jeans because my knees I feel busted. Like Jeff has probably always had a good butt. You know, certain people have like yeah. always had great arms or whatever it was. And probably Jeff's thing is like he's always had a good butt. Oh, well, thank your mama. I have a decent butt, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, because you did, didn't you play, what was it, swimming? Did yes. Swimming? I've always uh, done, I've always been swimming or cycling bods. or something. Yeah. Swimmer bods. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's yep. Je- Jeffster's conference deal. champion, fourteen years old. But he's also like skinny, so I think like skinny. I think skinny, tall, like big penises. Ah. Do you have a big one? Is it big? I'm 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 good with it. I'm happy with it. Is Are she the happy women with happy, with <laughs> happy with it? Oh, yeah. the happy question, with right? It. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. women I mean, happy with it. I mean, is it the size of this microphone? I mean, if they weren't happy, <laughs> well, are we talking I about the width? Are we talking about the length the here? Width, the width. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger than a banana. Ooh, which, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. What his eye, just letting you know. I don't what's know. What's the inches? Because I know you've penis measured. Looks like right now, huh? Oh, I don't know if we need to talk about it. Wait, exactly. have you measured? measured? Every guy's measured. Are you serious? Every man. Stop it. Have you measured <laughs> I mean, yours? No. 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 Well, I was shit. gonna say. What do you measure it with? Like a, just a regular ruler? Yeah. No, usually you take a phone or a water bottle. Or a remote. <laughs> Wait. Let's back it up. You compare know. it now to, you lost to the me. size? No. <laughs> Set right, no. I need a th- Look at this, <laughs> this, this bottle of beer. I opinion right now. Are you serious? <laughs> Come on, size. Is it between six and nine? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's I, it. <laughs> I mean, that's so broad, but whatever. <laughs> Pick a size, any size. It's <laughs> Behind six and nine. One. Why, why six and nine? 69? Well, no, like, oh. just because the average size is like seven, eight. Like our seven. It's usually seven. I don't know. I haven't done studies on this. Yeah, but you've taken plenty of them, so you I, should I know haven't the studied average. it though. I mean, like, it's <laughs> fine. Or yo, where is it? <laughs> like, you know, what about a Bruno? Prob- I want to know about Bruno now. <laughs> was that what brought you to him? Because he is. No, um, you've seen him. He is mm-hmm. not attractive, and you can say that as Wait, a straight man. Why does everybody tell me this after the fact? I told because you. Because when, when I me broke, pictures. when I broke up with him, it was like. Cindy comes out. You know, you could have done better. Da, da, da. I was like, wait, uh, wait a second. You didn't find him attractive. She goes, no, 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 though. No. If no, but he like had if a he's European in... flair, and I was like, uh-uh. what? It is not our place to tell you whether he's attractive. I... That's up to you. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. And, well, and I will say, Jeffster never said anything. Cindy never said it. But when I broke up, they were like, you could. But here's you could the thing. So much better. Here's the thing. Jeffster's not a good friend. Oh. <laughs> like I'm sorry, but I'm a friend. I told you from like D- when you showed one. me the pictures, yeah. I was like, no. 
I, no, for real. She's gorgeous. Like, yeah. and as a gay guy, I can say that she's gorgeous. She eats well. She's she knows what she wants almost to a fault. And like, mm-hmm. she's fit and like has stuff going for her. Right. If Why she had she... asked me my opinion, I would have given it to her. Yeah. But she's she's like, hey, this is the guy I've been dating since I was a teenager. Oh, so you support her so bad habits? She's like, met this is the love of my life. And no, I I I I could say things like. I don't think he's treating you right. I don't think he's that into you if, if he's not ever visiting you did or whatever. He? Did, right. did he say but that? I want, he it's not say, my uh, place to say he whether he's really hot or say, not. No, you never mentioned his looks or anything, but you, you'd you like, well, I mean, when was the last time you visited? Like, he would make those questions like, uh, so when are you going mm-hmm. there next? And how do you feel about that? And blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, shut up, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah she didn't want to hear it. I was trying to get her get her there. But Thinking, she didn't want to yeah, hear yeah. It. So what's the next And then when step? she started the question things, I was like, yes. Yeah. You See, should end this. This is the difference between a straight and a gay guy. A gay guy intuitively knows what you think and feel and doesn't have to ask you. They yes. just tell you. Yeah, yeah. Whereas a straight guy is like, uh, 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 I think you feel this way, but my dick's if, talking right now. No, so <laughs> if you can have that conversation no, I wasn't with to him. Sleep with her. No, no, no. I'm saying Every if you can man have. Tries to, I've tried to sleep with her. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so don't you're, even give me that. You're right. And I've tried to sleep with every other woman I know. Oh, okay. But I don't. I haven't tried to sleep with. Them. I, I, I have. And heard, I have said we've slept together. Yeah, in a I bed, have heard and that you guys slept. Together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that way, but you slept together in the same, the same bed. Yeah, in the same room. And stuff, I mean, but. you couldn't feel it. You no, don't know the we size? actually had a, a lot of space in between <laughs> us. I think Jeff purposely puts a pillow in between us, uh, as well as like he's the, safety, the whole time. like safety, like. <laughs> oh yeah, we have done this one a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. The other time was okay. when we were in LA, and then we, we had, had a king size flight. bed. I'm not that big. Yeah, like, but we were that's a long way. We were um, we had an early flight in LA. Remember, uh-huh. and we crashed in someone else's hotel. And there was oh, also yeah. a pillow there too. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I, I appreciate. So basically, the, you're I, the, I didn't make a barrier. I'm not. I wouldn't. I'm not like. No, I'm just saying. I, no, no, no. I don't know. Maybe that's just how you Maybe sleep. You, you like it. having a. Basically, a pillow you're the gay wrapping. straight friend. I do the body pillow thing. Yeah, you yeah. like wrapping yourself around. A, yeah, I can't yeah. Have. he's like the gay straight friend. Like yes, because I've slept in the same bed as you, and I didn't try anything. But I like, mean, you unfastened my bra. Yeah, but because you needed to yeah. not wear a bra, <laughs> but you asked me to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like. Very liberating. Yeah, is it? <laughs> I'll get your bra next time, D. Oh, one, 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 one handed. I'll, I'll and then I'll be wearing I would a sports bitch bra. Slap you. <laughs> I'll be wearing a sports bra. Wait, so hold on. Let me try. Hold on. You want to try it? Hold on. My hair is oh, gonna yeah, be in the way. Oh my god, you did. I did it. <laughs> you did. Now I have to. You have to be every impressed. man. Every man, to... straight or gay, should be able to do the bra. <laughs> no, I've, one had, I've had guys like fumble with getting my bra. I know, and they're fuck ups. They should be able to do it. And she fumbles too, putting it back on. No, I don't. I have to take my shirt from underneath my pants. Because my shirt is tucked in. Okay. There. Got there you got it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my arms reach in the back. I can scratch myself. I scratch my back and myself a pat on the okay, back. Okay, that is Good one job. thing about her that, like, bothers me. I don't know why it does. Yeah. Like, it, so she's been my friend forever, and forever she's had a cat. Now she I has, have two now. Liz, and that's what that's what makes me nervous. Why? Like she has because you worried about crazy she, cat lady. She's going to be. I love my babies. The, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. It's they're, they're adorable. They're adorable, but. Mm-hmm. How old are you now? No, I'm not answering that She's question. in her mid-30s. Um, and, like, at some point, well, here, here, you know, starting at 30, according to the Kardashians, your eggs start to decline <laughs> drastically. Yeah. And you have to freeze them. But, so, like, she's, like, you know, all of a sudden, you're only going to have cats. Yeah. <laughs> like, but who, who ever hold said on, that? Wait, 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 whoever said I wanted kids? Yeah. You and I talked about this years ago. I'm just saying, yes. though, but years ago. And then I smartened up. But I'm just uh, saying. <laughs> I don't think but I've ever known the I've D. Never, I've no, I know has never wanted kids. Yeah, I've person. never. Why I've does never, he call you the D? Because uh, <laughs> that's what cause she called I herself. Because I am the D. Because um, at CrossFit, everybody calls me D. Just D. Yeah, but you're not the D. <laughs> I am. I am to certain people. I said the D that I know. Do you want yeah. that D? You can have that D. <laughs> the D that you. Know. I called her vitamin D when she worked at a, a different store. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't necessarily know if I want kids. To be honest with you, I think that if I were in the relationship and the guy really wanted kids, then we'd have to talk about that. But I don't, I don't know if I really want kids. I mean, I mean all the who parts. cares what he wants? Yeah, no, but I'm just saying, like, I don't, I don't know. I, I think about it and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I have patience for that. <laughs> I see how my sister struggles and like, well, you know, and you really I, mean, have I love my, for the I dude. love, I love my nephews and everything, but I don't know if I necessarily, I, I mean, I can be perfectly happy with not having kids. So why would I want to add kids to the equation? Mm. Maybe it would make me happier. Maybe it wouldn't. I don't yeah. know if I'm ever going to, you know, 
like regret that in life and be like, oh, I wish I had kids. Well, I could always adopt. Like there's other ways to still have. And have I have children. a feeling there's no amount of Kegels that'll get your mm, back to place Oof, where it's God. now. <laughs> and that scares me too. When I see the transfer, listen, when I see the transformation of your body as well, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. As far as like oh, a pregnant woman mm -hmm. and then like all that. And to me, I'd probably take it as a challenge. Like, let me see if I can get my body back. Right. <laughs> but it is scary as fuck. Like, uh -huh. I'm like, wait, what's that? And what happened here? And I'm like, my heart is like pounding. Like, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. Um, but I have been in the delivery room twice with my sister. And I, I remember like she's like pushing out Nathan. And I said, Sandra, if I could like never have kids, and stuff, would, would you like have a kid for me? She's like, yeah. And I look at her like, what? I'm like, dude, yo, these drugs are way too strong. <laughs> way too strong. Yeah. And yeah, she was like, yeah, if you couldn't, I would. And I was like, mm, okay. Huh. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. See, I want to know what a baby of mine would look like. That's the only thing I, so, like, wonder. That's, like, the greedy side of me. I would adopt. If no, I would just want to know, right. like, what genetics they would get from me. They'd probably get my temper. Um, <laughs> Hopefully not your tits. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that's true. Hopefully they get the dad's tits. <laughs> Instead. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Big boobs don't run in my family, though, so. Yeah. Yeah. My mom, I mean, she's got good for her size and my mm. sister for her size. But don't we want to know have, about your don't... mom. <laughs> big boobs yeah. are overrated. No, I'm saying Ooh. we don't have like overly big boobs. That's okay. Like I've, I've lived my whole life like this. Jeff if I just had big, flirting with you. If I had big boobs. No, if I had. Yeah. Big, what do you mean? I, no, he no, just said, not. no, he just complimented backhanded, backhandedly. He commented you and said, small boobs are fine. No, he so, said, yeah, he said big boobs are overrated. Yeah, exactly, yeah. because he wants to make you feel better about yourself. No, he doesn't. This he's is not called, a boob, no, 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 he's not listen, a boob guy. This is called flirting. They, they, no, he's not oh a boob my guy. God. You're so naive. <laughs> Give me a break. He's not a boob guy. <laughs> doesn't matter. He just gave you a compliment backhandedly. That's in the, in the and straight that's fine, world. And I'll flirting. accept that. <laughs> How are you naive? <laughs> I'm not being naive. I accept no, what he said. No, it's more like, it, I don't know. I just like to break the stereotype that all guys are obsessed with giant boobs. Yeah. Ugh. I hate that. Yeah, but I mean, you've dated a big-breasted woman before. Guaranteed. Mm, yes. Exactly. That doesn't, mean that, that doesn't mean I don't like them when they're not beautiful. I'm okay. just saying. Uh, this guy's way too sensitive. <laughs> like, for a straight guy, I can't. Even I'm over him. <laughs> like, Fair enough. And I haven't even had sex with him. <laughs> like, <laughs> how long How long is your longest relationship? Oh. Um, like five or six years. How old are you? I'm you? 36. Okay. So five or six years. Was that like your yeah. last relationship or was no. that? No. no, that was a I long think time. it was like his that was first, my first relationship. One. Yeah, the first, first one. The first one was way too long. They've all been shorter since then. Hmm. And who breaks up with who in relationships with you? Mm. I'm not trying to tear you down. I just want to know. Uh, that's a good question. I, hmm. think. I think it goes, I know. I think it's pretty, I think it goes both ways. It's an agreement. Yeah, yeah because he is the agreer. He's sensitive and he's going to go, okay. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, well, okay. I, the most recent one, I kind of initiated. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Because it wasn't good. <laughs> it was bad. We weren't they happy. They were bad for each other? Mm -hmm. Maybe? How long? I don't know which was the most recent one. Is the one I know? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. It's because you had that knee stuff going on, huh? No, no, way, it was before, way before, the, that. before the knee. I yeah, know. I broke my knee, and then she just didn't like me anymore. Well, <laughs> She's no. like, I have to do all this shit for you. <laughs> Screw you. Go find your own. <sighs> I got to ride you now. <laughs> oh, God, this is tiring up here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. At least my hair looks good. <laughs> but now it's getting all sweaty. <laughs> now what? Yep. <laughs> someday I'll... I need a fan. <laughs> Some, Tech I'll Tom, my... where's the fan? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I did, I, there was a period there where I, you know, I had to be ridden. Where you were gay? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sorry. you are not in luck. Stop adjusting yourself. <laughs> really? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, I, no offense, but I could do better. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice ass and all. <laughs> no offense. No taking. <laughs> are, are you done trying to figure him out? No, I. It, I just I a think sensitive. He, yeah, he's easy. Like he, he's the he's the nice guy that you won't ever go for. Me. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 I, I never. I never go for the nice guy. Yeah. That's. Yeah. If If yeah. Jeff were an asshole, I'd be super attracted to him. I'd be like, Shh. oh yeah. Really? Like, no. Like I knew the reason. day I met her. I knew. Let's go that buy a motorcycle, bro. Never... <laughs> Wait. First off. 
<laughs> do you remember when we first like first met? I don't remember the first day. Like the conversation. No. Yes. I mean, I just know it was. Do you remember the it? one of the conversations we had? Oh, and I think about that's radio? how I started. No, no, it was about. So Jeff had started CrossFit, and uh, he does not look like he's a CrossFit quiet. dude. Well, he was kind. Of, he was quiet. I'm he used not to come really. to class and stuff, and really quiet. And mm-hmm. I was like, "What's up with this guy? He's so quiet. What the hell?" So then he, uh, there's always he's like got the a cute weights. Butt. No, there's no, no. I didn't. I didn't <laughs> yeah. His hey, butt's in it. My gym shorts were not cute. No, they were green, and he still has them. Uh, he wears them. <laughs> yeah, I remember. And a black t-shirt. I had, I had like one pair of shorts. Black for a long t-shirt time. and a green. Yeah, and he still just has those green shorts. So, and he All hasn't right. gone to class because he. Those are his lucky shorts. A... That was the day you talked to him. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, as you know, in CrossFit, that's you how have, I got her. You have the fe- the weights for like uh, male and female, R- RX, fire. Usually, one's lighter, one's heavier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Jeff, I believe, was not even doing the female weight yet. And he's like, I'm working up to the women's, the women's prescribed. This, this, this show this is was really, our conversation. really making me sound great. Hey, you yeah. want to be a part of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, and, and, uh, and I was like, I think you were picking your weights. And I said, that's all you're doing. And he was like, what? And I go, what's your name again? He's like, Jeff. I was like, I don't like Jeff. Let's call you Jeffster. And I think from then on, I just called him Jeff. So who was flirting with who? She just gave me a nickname out of nowhere. But I wasn't flirting. That's just how I am with people I know, in general. I, I agree, but right, I'm no, not. I wasn't flirting. I think people take no. it as flirting, but an I'm observer not. would. You know what she is? What she? Uh, I don't want to say a piranha because a piranha just like attacks. I, she is. She is like always got a leash, and she's always the one who has to be in control. Yeah. So regardless of whether she like likes you that way or not, in this situation, she's in the gym. She knows it's her territory. Right. And so she's just marking her territory by saying, hey, what's your name? And like, like now you're hers. Now, like, now you're part yeah. of it. Why can't that just be me being friendly? No, it, it, I, like me yeah. being friendly, like, oh, this is a new guy. He hasn't really talked to anybody here. Let, let me just start a conversation with him so he can feel like he kind of fits into you this can, noon class that he only comes like once or twice a month. Mm-hmm. But, you know, maybe if we talk to him and we get him to come more often, mm-hmm. he'll come to noon because he's starting to feel but like you, more So what are you, the marketing that, person for the CrossFit gym? No. No, yeah, but I, I think, like to, if, if I like to work out with these certain people, right? So now mm-hmm. I go to the 9 a.m. one. And so like, I'll, I actually hold people kind of accountable mm-hmm. and I'll be like, Jen, where were you? Oh, it was snowing. Oh, okay, okay. But so I'm just asking, like, starting conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to, like, point the finger. Where were you? Why did you work out? How dare you? Like, no. I just, like, I like working out with this uh, this group. And so when somebody's missing, I'm like, oh, that person's missing. Where have they been? What have they been doing? Da, da, da. And mm-hmm. I wanted Jeff to feel like he was part of that 12 o'clock class. Because at the time it was 12, not 1130. Which, by the way, switched now to 11. All these details uh, are so yeah. monotonous. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm just thinking, like, that is your territory, that gym. You could you could do that in your gym. I, you need to do it in real life. Like, she does it everywhere. And that's what she I'm does saying. it everywhere. She I dominates know. everywhere she goes. But uh, whoa. <laughs> I mean, it's just true. She dominates. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you think I'm just like the the quiet nice guy, but that's just that's just the role I play when she's around. Oh, because okay. that's that's the dynamic that works. What, what we is we took this road trip together, and you know whatever D wants, D gets. A but prince, just, a prince in the streets, but a free. A, what is the saying? Freak in the sheets. Freak yeah. In the sheets. So. Okay, so again, back to the big D. <laughs> I mean you. I mean you. Yeah. Like, I, I just think that, like, in your environment, you have to own it, all of it. That's why you do that. In the, in the other space, you do it because you just want to meet people. You know what I'm saying? So I think there's, like, the reason why he think he might have taken it as flirting. I didn't. He didn't take it as flirting. But then you just but said. But I'm saying, but you were you were. Just, you would have said it. You're that saying that it was an flirting. observer would think that I was flirting. I think no, no, no. would have thought she was flirting. No, but no, that's no. not how, that, that's, that's not, that's not what either of us were thinking. I wouldn't have interpreted her calling you a different name, flirting. Okay. No, because she does that to everybody. Yeah. Right. She literally will own you. Right. Then it doesn't matter. Now, if I thought you I were cute, know. said to her that I think he's cute, and then she would have, and then it would have been something like, okay, now she's flirting. You're now you're attacking because I told you to. She's like a cat, mm. so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but she, but she did it on her own. She's not flirting. Right. I right. don't know if she thought you were attractive. Then you could have looked. No, I knew different. it. I knew it wasn't about that. I, there's no way. I'm like I'm the new guy. Who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. She's the, <laughs> she's she's the badass who kicks everyone's ass in the whole class. There's no way that was happening. Like, yeah, it wasn't I on. Mean, I sometimes sometimes you gotta take pity on people, but yeah, no, just yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, oh, exactly. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She's right. so kidding. humble. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm kidding. No, I knew, I knew I where think, I stood. Well, in that room. I, I mean, I 
wouldn't That's necessarily her house. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't date somebody that went to the same gym as me. Like it would just I don't know. Because you know you would out. Why not? Who cares? I know, but it just I because then if things don't work out, I don't want to see your damn face. I don't want to have to like yeah, go to a different class. Damn. The way I look you, at it, the like, way I look, I look at it, we go to the gym and then after the gym sex is yes, the best. Seriously. Yeah. Like I mean, you know. I get it. No, I do know. It's not but like what it's I'm where you work. Like, it's your gym. No, I it's, know, but I'm just saying it makes it so awkward because then it's like I don't know. This shows you answer. how important the gym is in yeah, your life. It is. Like, it I can't is. jeopardize the gym. If we if the relationship goes bad, we'll have to change gyms. Oh, by the way, she made it a point to drive by her gym and say, I go there every day mm-hmm. on the way here. Yeah. So. Well, you have to go if you're oh, coming, yeah, up, sure, yeah, coming okay. up that, uh-huh. that road. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. showed you exactly she where just it was. Own a gym. Maybe she will. Yeah, maybe I will. Who knows? Okay. I'm not going to it. <laughs> I Why? Don't want, I don't want no nicknames. <laughs> Jackster. I don't like Jackson. Uh, we're gonna change you Jackson. <laughs> Jackster. <laughs> what are you doing here? But don't you know Jeffster? Yeah, he's on hiatus right now. He's not coming, so you could be Jackster instead. I'm um, over him. He was last uh, month. <laughs> yeah, he was last month. Anyways, um, so since uh, radio is his, ch- well, you no longer work in radio. I don't mm-hmm. no longer work in radio. Oh, I work in radio still. Oh yeah, well, true. I do a little stuff. Yeah. Here um, h- how do you like flying? Um. I like it a lot. Yeah. I like it a lot. More than what you thought you would like. um, There's a lot of rules. I mean, so I'm a creative person. You Mm -hmm, know that. mm -hmm. Like like stuff like this, I like to be able to be creative and express myself and laugh. Um, And the the airlines is not like that. It's either Mm -hmm. cut or dry. But you can make it like that with the people on the plane. I've seen a lot of- Like with people who work on the plane or- or... People work on the plane, but people that come on the plane really make or break the whole whole thing. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like I've seen the worst in humanity- Mm. flying and then i've also seen some of the really great things in humanity but like for the most part 80 percent of people that get on planes just show the worst of themselves really yeah 80 percent yes why what do you I, why why are you saying and i don't know why i really think it's anxiety. are they like fighting for the sea are they like fight what i, th- I think the, i think it brings out the worst in them when they, when they get on a plane the anxiety i think i, I think Anxiety of flying. People may fly every day, but they still have anxiety about about flying. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're in the middle of the air, 40,000 feet, whatever, and there's still anxiety. And I think that that gets to people even... I get anxiety with flying. It's not even being in the air and all that stuff. It's time. Right. So it's like, make sure you get there and the on bullshit time. of the airport. Yeah. 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 So it's like, am I going to have enough time to get through security? Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, am I going to make that flight? Okay. You're on the flight. And now, okay. When I land, uh, uh, um, I'm renting a car and then it, is that going to be time? So mm-hmm. those little pieces, but the whole flight itself, I'm fine. Right. It's just those little, it's like the, uh, even packing and getting ready to go. It's like, go, 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 go. Mm-hmm. So then when I'm on the plane, I'm kind of like, whew. Okay, nap time. That's probably why I pass out yeah. before we even take off. Because I'm, I'm so like, all of a sudden it's like, and then I like I fall, fall asleep. I don't have a problem. Because I'm okay with being in the air and flying and yeah. doing all that. But it's that anxiety of like running around from here to there. Da, da, da. That's what get, gets me going. I also think people have a misconception of of who's in charge when it comes to an airline or mm-hmm. comes to flying. You know, They think the pilot's in charge? Well, they think the pilot's. They think the airline itself is making decisions mm-hmm. like delays and mechanical. They really think that like, we can help that there's a delay somewhere or there's weather somewhere or there's this somewhere or that the plane has a broken part. We can't help all of that. Right. And so I think, and the perception is, is why aren't you helping me? It's like, I don't owe you anything. Neither does the airline. We just owe you a seat to get to the next destination. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, well, today was a prime example. A guy was like, I paid $85 for this seat and it's so noisy. I'm like, okay, well, you're sitting on the engine, like you're sitting on the wing, so it's the loudest. And yeah, there are children on this plane because guess where you're going? A destination that has kids. So it's like, I I can't help that. You purchased the ticket. By the way, pretty cheap ticket if you ask me. Yeah, I was going to say $85. Uh, Where was was he going? Was that to choose the seat or the whole ticket? Right. Right? That was was the whole ticket. Oh, my God. Wow. And and he insisted on me trying to move him, but the plane was full. And I'm like, I'm sorry. It's not my fault. You picked your seat. You paid for it. Like, I can't. It's not my fault. What do you? I can ask if someone's willing to move into a noisier section, but that's just rude because what if they paid $400 for their ticket? Right, right. You know what I mean? So I, I can't move you. That's not something that's. It, it, it's circumstance. If you don't want to be on a plane with kids, then get a private jet. Right. Like, I, 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 and I don't mean that to be an a noise canceling right. headphones. Right. But yeah. like, that's, I mean, and sometimes like this guy flies all the time. He's a business. You can tell he just right. is a business traveler and Wi-Fi is, 
and iffy, out. iffy in the air. I yeah. mean, you have to understand it's a satellite. It's going to the ground, back to the plane. So if we are over mountains, sometimes it doesn't get back to the plane. Nothing we can do about it. Mm-hmm. Nothing the anyone can do about it. But this man came up to me and said, our Wi-Fi is not working. You're, and I was like, okay. And he was like, I've already paid for it. You got to fix this. And I was like, well, unfortunately we're going over this. And so it's probably going to come back in about 10 minutes. Just give it 10 minutes. And he looked at me like I was the dumbest thing on the planet. Well, like and it was your, your like fault, it was my fault. Yeah, that you put and, those mountains there. And what so I that- just said was the stupidest thing I've ever said. Cause he, he rebuttals with, um, it's a satellite. You, you don't get dead spots with a satellite. And I was like, uh, and I literally rebuttaled and said, well, do you have XM satellite radio? Have you ever driven and lost it? That's a dead spot. <laughs> nice. Satellite radio actually comes from the ground, not from the air. And a lot of people don't know that. Like, yes, there's a satellite, but that signal bounces off an, an antenna on the ground, ground and then to your car. So, yes, there's going to be dead spots if there's not an antenna on the ground to receive our Wi-Fi. I mean, all this stuff is serious talk, but I'm sitting there going, this guy is really talking to me like I'm a two-year-old <laughs> and do you, because do you the keep Wi-Fi cool doesn't thing? work. Of course do you, you stay have to. totally polite? Or do yeah, you, or, listen, this has taught me or do you or, do, or can you tell? can he tell from your voice that you're, you're pissed? Oh, uh, probably. I have this three times rule on the <laughs> So That's the, generous. The first time, because a lot of people get in their zone and they're watching TV or right. whatever. And, but we clearly come through the aisle to serve a beverage and a snack or whatever. And so, and again, I'm a glorified bartender. It makes me feel so proud. Um, but I'm dr- I go down and literally I might lean over and say, would you care for a drink? And they don't say anything. Second time, I say it again, a little bit louder, and I get their attention, and they're looking right at me, and I say, can I get you a drink? So I say it slower, right. and like a little bit more irritated, because clearly, I, you know what I'm asking you. Right. And then they, they move their headphones, and they're like, huh? And I was like, uh, can I get you a drink? And like, then you know that I'm like... What is your yeah. drink? Right. <laughs> like, and so I, get it, I, I do get that. Like, edgy, I'm, and I, I I'm get surprised you asked more than once. I mean, well, I don't want to have to come all the way back after I've done it. Right, right, right. Yeah, but here's my thing: if you are a passenger on a plane and you see them bringing out the cart with the beverages, wouldn't you want a drink? You better speak up. If I want a drink, and I'm, I'm like, wait, damn, they're not here yet. Uh, Yeah, yeah. so I'm watching, and I get wait, and then you know, I see them on. They're talking to some, you know, the other aisle or the aisle in front of me. I take my headphones on. Yeah, can I get? Yeah, we got to work together here. uh, Yeah, yeah, make this happen. If I don't want to eat or if I don't want to drink, then I'm not. Yeah, but I, mean, I may hear her asking about. But if I, if I fell asleep, don't wake me up. See, this is normal human yeah, activity. Yeah, that doesn't right. happen all the time on no, a plane. It yeah. yeah, and and you really, I think it's what's crazy is I've also been on a plane with like you know celebrity or status or someone of status, and they are nicer than those without status. Right. It's like interesting. I don't understand. I mean, oh, there was a two-hour delay. Maybe just because they do it up more often, Maybe and they realize they that you guys are people more? too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, was, I mean. But I, even in the cases of like bad weather, like if, if we're delayed three or four hours, it's my fault. Mm-hmm. And what am I going to do to make it better? Right. Right. It's like I, I only have drinks. Like here, do you want a vodka? You Actually, know, something? That, that, that helped me. <laughs> oh, I, and, I do, and we do do that. We do. But it's like there's only like so. And then they take advantage of it. And then we're like, OK, uh, so you've had four drinks mm-hmm. the past hour. No more. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, I mean, and then there's, of course, the ones that get intoxicated and they have a lot of fun on the plane. And then we have to, you know, kind of make sure that they don't drink anymore and get off the plane and don't get into a car accident because we gave them drinks. Right. Shit. You do know that, like, in the air, one drink is, like, really three per, like, mm-hmm. per drink in the air. That do you not learn this in me. school? Do you learn this in, in the like, training? training? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're only supposed to give one drink per hour because your body in the air can only metabolize one drink per hour. Oh, is that why we feel skinny when we get off a plane? You should feel fat when you get off a plane. I sometimes feel skinny. Because you should swell. Why don't swag? <laughs> that's because I she, the next day. That's because she has no body fat on her. No. It's all muscle. Sometimes I'm like, oh, wow, that plane ride was good. And the following day, I'm like, I feel so bloated. Again, she's you feeling don't get cankles. <laughs> you don't get cankles um, when you get off the plane? You know, I had really bad cankles that time. I flew from Seattle. I it thought was you said kegels. Away. No, I remember. I'm sorry. It was from like France. She, she's working out in her seat. She, yeah, right now. I can tell. Yeah, yeah. no, it was Are from you moist? France. <laughs> No, I'm dry, completely dry. Uh, here you go, honey. <laughs> I don't Water. Need it yet. Um, it was when I flew from France over back to Seattle. Oh my God. I took a picture and I sent this to my sister. I go, 
what is going on? I've never seen my ankles like this. It took my feet. It took yeah. like a couple of days for it to go down. Yep. It was crazy. I, but most, that was hours I was on a plane. Yeah. Hours. Well, and in most cases, people don't realize it, but we were, when you drink coffee, when you eat anything with salt or that retain that your body retains the salt, um, you're, you're actually causing inflammation in the air oh. after that fact. Well, because when I stopped in Boston, I then had a lobster roll with fries and a beer. And that's when I definitely swelled. And I was like, this stuff is so amazing. And you are more of a handful then. <laughs> yeah, right I was two handfuls. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yes, we were both Portuguese. Did you know that? No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're both uh, Portuguese descent. Um, but I don't know any Portuguese, but she, can you say something in Portuguese? Uh, it's very dirty. It's like, oh, I hear it no, all. it's not. You should hear her talk. It's, it's not You heard her talk to her mom on the phone? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, my yeah. God. So she's met, like, my grandmother who does speak Portuguese. Yes. And they would go back and forth. And I'm but like, oh, my God, fun. what are they talking about? Uh, <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. No, because she was my beard. No. She was, she was, <laughs> like, I would not take her because I wanted them to think I was straight, but, like, right. they loved her and thought I would marry her, so I would bring her I around. I <laughs> absolutely loved your grandmother. She was she, the sweetest lady. She made good caserla sandwiches. Oh, uh, so. she was just, but, like, it's, like, whatever she had, she was a typical Portuguese, whatever she uh, had in her house, it was yours. Like, oh, oh yeah. tu queres isto? Here, toma. See, so know, messy. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was just, like, whatever she had, we call it, like, manjerotas, rotas, like, uh, whatever was in her hand, she just gave to you. It, she didn't, it, she didn't matter if she needed it or not. You want slippers? Here's some slippers. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was just, like, yeah. It's, it's, so, so it's like it's Spanish really and Russian. Yeah. Every yeah. straight guy listening right now is totally hard. <laughs> yeah, give us some more. Give us some more, D. <laughs> Just pretend you're talking to your cats. Uh, oh, but that's high pitched. That would be. Yeah, it that is. Would, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, you want to go outside? No, See, no. yeah, it's like, yeah, no, 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 that's not hot. All right, that, yeah, scratch yeah, yeah. that. When I'm talking to pets and, and like anything with, it's always this like higher pitch. I do that to um, the family that I house sit for with a dog too. I'm like, Duchess, you want to come? You want to go outside? Oh, you good girl. <laughs> we all Come here, Linda. Yeah. All right. No, I, meant the, I meant the Portuguese, not the high pitch <laughs> part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The high pitch. When you talk I to actually the cats. think I've gone over Cindy's house and talked to her cats like that, and they get scared. She's like, I think it's the high pitch voice. Yeah. I go, it's it, high pitch. You think so? <laughs> I think that's why the guy probably leaves before morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, usually I leave before morning. Oh. Yeah, it's like, bye. I can't sleep in your place. Bye. <laughs> I need my space. Yeah. <laughs> I need my so, space. I think the, there's a big misconception with uh, flight attendants, too, by the way. Mm -hmm. Or What's as far that? as like, you know, the the sleeping over and the whoring around. I think there's a good a good hand a good amount of people that do do that. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, a lot of us um want our sleep. I mean, a lot of flight right. attendants like you. I like tomorrow or next week or whatever, I'll work like long days, like eight. I'll be in the air for eight or nine hours. When I get on the ground, I don't want to work to have sex. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it's. I mean, it's. I'm. I'm. I bet you someone's listening right, right now. They're like, oh god, yeah, it's way too much work, and it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause then you got to meet up and you got to get dressed and you got to like, and you just were in a plane for, and right. you feel gross. Because I was just going to say, you don't feel sexy. Right. I can't say I've ever flown somewhere. And then I land and I'm like, ah. I feel sexy. <laughs> it's like, no, you kind of want to like go home, shower, yeah. change your clothes. Like, you know, and who know who coughed on you or anything. Yeah. You just like, feel like these, all these yeah. germs are on you right now. Yeah. 1200 people's germs on you. For yeah. yeah. So, I mean, even on shorter, two hour flights still, I am, I always feel like you always feel dirty. Yeah. And I was like, Ooh, not going to lie. I've had a chance to meet a lot of very, I, let's just say it's the most thirsty job. It, it's, the most thirsty job ever because I have had like Russian hockey teams on my plane before Ooh. or skiers on my plane before Port or a baseball <laughs> team. <laughs> oh my gosh. The hey. Russian hockey team. Nice. But, but like, so yeah, now I'm thirsty. Now I'm like, God, <gasps> they're so hot. Like, Can geez. we talk about this one guy picture? You send me of a guy and you're like, you need to follow him. <gasps> oh, okay. Wait, wait. He this was is, so hot. He was this hot guy, though. This guy was not on my plane. He is from Richmond where I lived. Oh, so you knew him? No, 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 no. I'm talking about the not the Richmond guy that you okay, were talking okay. about. Oh, gosh. The other a few. one. No, the other one. He was on your flight, and you sent me a picture, and you're like, D you need to follow him on oh, Instagram. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Oh, come on. Oh, I, I got to follow, follow him on Instagram, on but I sent it to you recently. Um, Look at our chat on Instagram. You were like, check out this Instagram. video. Hold on. On our Instagram, though? Yeah, direct message. Oh, oh wait, Instagram. wait, wait. No, is it this guy? Is it this guy? Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. oh it's, it's this one. It's this one. Yes. yes. But I thought that the picture you sent me with him, he was a lot cuter than this. Like, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, I mean, this is definitely more her type. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He's a flight attendant. 
Is he a flight attendant? Yeah. Wait, I thought you said that he was on your flight. No, he was working my flight with me. Oh, he's me. working your flight. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. But so yeah. Get yeah, back then, to CrossFit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then you go on, like, his Instagram, it's all these pictures of him and, and selfies, and I'm like, meh. No. I mean, you're nice to look at, honey. Uh-huh. But, I mean, is there anything else there? Yeah. Well, he's dating someone in Fort Lauderdale, so never mind. I mean, I'm sure he's dating somebody in, like, Tampa, uh, what <laughs> Atlanta, are you gonna pull- and all these other... Pull- no, I don't want... I'm all set. I, I don't need that. I'm just saying, like, he just She's gonna seems- pull an Ariana Grande. Break yeah. up with, with your girlfriend. Because <laughs> she's bored. <laughs> and she has two cats. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need that type of headache. I'm all set. I'm all set. But he was, like, he was cute, and I follow him, but sometimes he comes up on my feet. I'm like, who's this again? Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he does post these, like video these mirror selfies after the gym with him like flexing and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm like all right you yeah know, you know like I, when i start going to the gym again i won't be doing that yeah. right like i never did that to begin with i'm if i mean i want to show progress like one year to the next but i'm not going to be like yeah i got man tits like that's you know i'm hot now. <laughs> i'll let you borrow my bra <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i'll let you undo it yeah <laughs> <laughs> It'll work out perfectly. With my hands. <laughs> oh, it's easy. <laughs> Come on. How? I, I can't do it myself. I can't do it. Oh, like you gotta to figure that out. Then. I know. I know. Um, Next time you see Cindy, just reach around. <gasps> oh, I gotta find, reach around. And, reach around. Can and I try see to... a picture of her? Because apparently she's got the big boobs. And... I don't have my phone on me. I think it's okay. In my, All right. Well, later. Yeah, yeah, we'll get later. Yeah, yeah. So wait. Back to how many inches? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's um, it's good. It's good. No, no, no. I want. Inches. No, I'm not going there. Why you not? Want not on the radio. Not on the radio. Specifics. Just exaggerate, like they all do. He doesn't want to I'll say just, it on the I'll radio. Just... <laughs> okay, I'm eight. Congratulations. I, no, I mean, <laughs> come on. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> should, should we get a ruler out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no one in this room is going to do anything for me. Yeah. Like, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> that's well, messed up. <laughs> uh, well, it's not going to do anything really for me either. Yeah, You're but at gay, least you I'm can do something for him. Tech Tom's here, like, yeah, working listen, on his phone. If like, we want to measure inches, you'll at least do something for them. I'll but, do something are you, for Are them? you making her my fluffer? No, yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> All right. Sorry to objectify you. <laughs> Did not mean to objectify you. <laughs> Just blow on it. <laughs> Jeez, that's all he's hoping for. <laughs> oh, God. A little cool breeze, and that's it. <laughs> um, so what would it take to get you back like on the radio? A lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, Do you has... think that would it, what if it were back in Richmond? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. So, uh, so I mean, you've told me that R- Richmond is, is home for you. Yeah, it's weird because I lived in Richmond for about eight years and you know, I try to think of it in perspective, like it was because of the job that I got and the place that I was that allowed me to meet so many awesome people mm-hmm. in that city. But really, it's the city. Like the city itself has such personality. Like they have so many great bars and mm-hmm. restaurants and the people that own them really are about the community. And I just really loved everything there. Like mm-hmm. I would go to a restaurant by myself half the time just because I really enjoyed the atmosphere that it was. There's speakeasies there. There's colleges there. Um, lots Everyone's of, super friendly there too. Yeah. And there's lots of businesses growing mm-hmm. there and it's just an exciting place to live and it's beautiful. I mean, mm-hmm. the history, I think we went on the bike path uh, once, you know, I think for me, it would, it's just situational. Like mm-hmm. I would, I would literally want the right situation. I want more work life balance because mm-hmm. when I was there, it was seven days a week. I lived in, and it was part of me. It was who I was. Mm -hmm. And now I want that balance. So the next job has to have the balance. Right. And, you know, I've been talking to you about like moving to the record label side of things for the past year. I wanted to do that. And I still am very passionate about it. But at the age that I'm at now, which is not too old, but not too young, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm not old by any means, but um, I'm getting to the point where I really do want to settle into something that is going to be for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know in radio, it's not, it's never the case. You know what I mean? Like we could do a show for 10 years and then it's off the air. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I want to do something that's going to be long term, and I want to settle into a place that I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I mean, Richmond would be great. I would absolutely do radio again in there, but what if it were in Boston? Cause I remember when we were both starting off our careers, Boston was always that one city. We were like, no, I'd work here. And I lived in Boston and I lived in Boston for years, but what if the right opportunity came along in Boston on air? Would you do it? Yeah. Uh, but I would know to negotiate better. Yeah. And it's not even about the money. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, I want to be able to live comfortably in Boston, but I, I really want to 
do my morning show because that's what I would do and allow myself to be a part of all the things I want to be a part of in the city, Mm -hmm. whether it's concerts, meet, meeting up with people, you know, uh, just being board, a board member of something important in the city as well. Mm -hmm. Things that I'm interested in and helping, you know, grow, allowing me to still live a balanced life. Mm -hmm. Cause I would, I mean, I have a feeling, you know, radio, what it does to you is it's a lifestyle. Everyone knows that. And especially the morning show. If you have to go to yeah. bed at 9 p.m. every yeah. night, but 8 I, p.m. But even not that, it's just you've become a, a piece of a bigger entity. And that piece is integral to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And you sometimes when you become very successful, which I was very successful in Richmond, I was number one. I was making great money. I was helping a lot of local businesses. But um, you lose a piece of yourself doing it because mm-hmm. you have to say your identity, your identity, your own self identity, right? Because yeah. yeah, I love this, I love this, I love this, and it's all amazing, and it's all great, and mm-hmm. it's all part of me. But it, then I, I, I lose myself. Like I, great, listen, I am so so. So let me pause for, pause for a second. When you lose that job, it's almost like you lost that identity. Exactly. So no. it's like you're you have yourself, but right. you're almost trying to figure out who who is that person. Yes. Right. And that's. Why yeah. I got into the airline initially because I'm sitting here going, I love to travel. You've always loved traveling. So. Even when you worked for the other airline, you, mm-hmm. I was like, I think you even said to me, like, you know what? If I ever lose a radio, I'm going to try be a flight attendant Again, and just yeah. travel. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And then so you did do it. And I was like, well, you've been saying that. So, so, yeah. and so now this brings me to like the conversation in the crossroads that I'm at now where I can have both. Right. So, and, and it's, it's become a very tough decision for me to make because I, you know, there's a, there's a, position that opportunity an opportunity that to be in radio full time but also still fly and i'm just like ugh is that really going to give you the lifestyle you want? Right. And, and, and not only that, but I've always wanted to work for a record label. Since I was 18, when I had my first interview with bigwigs at Jive, big the, the people that ran Sony, all the big names, the Britney Spears right. record label, mm-hmm. when I was 18 years old, I flew myself to New York. I sat with the bigwigs. I said I wanted this ever since I was 18. I'm now 34, and I'm still trying to get that job. And so now it's cl- I'm closer than I've ever been, and I've all, all these crossroads are coming my way, and it's kind of frustrating because, you know, one, on one hand, it would be like so comfortable for me to just do both because that's what I want. Mm-hmm. I want to do radio both and flying, or be in the music world and fly. Mm-hmm. I, and so, and one might the other one might not let me do that. And so I don't know. Like I still want to fly. I think I'm enjoying flying and you make good money. Mm-hmm. Like after a couple of years of flying, you end up making great money. And the benefits are awesome. Of course, I get to fly around the world for free. And so your does friends. she. Yeah. She gets to fly around too. So and your friends. Those sound cool. Yeah. So it's really uh it's it's a tough time for me to like find and not only that, I'm still lost from my last gig. I mean, it was mm-hmm. eight years of me working seven days a week and being yeah. Jackson all day and all night. Right. So, you know, after you do that and you don't have that anymore. Right. And I don't think the people around you that made the decision to get rid of you realize that yeah. they mm-hmm. realize the business side, like, Hey, he doesn't, right. he's burnt out. He doesn't want to, and we can make more money doing this or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, or we could pay him, pay someone else less. But yeah. It's like we were having that conversation before, um, where I, and I've said this too, I've always for years, um, have put my career first, right. Mm-hmm. And b- before a relationship before, um, I want to say necessarily before family, but I was, it was always like career family relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so that I don't know if they necessarily realize how much time we put into that and what you gave up and what, what you gave up. And, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and I always looked at career as like, that's the one thing that's never going to fail you because if you work really hard, you're always going to have this awesome career. And then when, when I got laid off, it was like almost like a a slap in the face. Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, you thought that it wouldn't fail you, but ha ha, here it is. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, you're almost kind of lost. Cause you're like, well, I thought this wasn't gonna, it was almost like a relationship. Like, oh, well, he, he can't, he's, he's never going to break up with me. And then mm-hmm. he does. Right. Yeah. Or, or, you know, so that's how I felt like when I lost my job, as far as radio, it's like, I gave so much time, so much effort and gave up all these other things. I changed my whole life around. I moved across the country for this, for my career mm-hmm. and no, it's not going to fail me. And then it did. So it's like, now, yeah. now, now you feel kind of lost. You're like, now what? Well, it's, now it's, what? A, I mean, I've, my heart has been broken more times by radio than it huh? has by people. Yeah. But yeah. I will say I've, there's been a lot of failed relationships. And I can, I can, I blame myself, which is not a good thing, but, at, but at the same time, I know that I put something before something else and I know what it was, but they know what it was too. Cause mm-hmm. I said it, 
I would openly say this comes first and no one wants to be second to it. And so I think at the end of the day, it's really a, a conscious choice that I need to make as I'm growing older and realizing it, that I have to put someone first, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that's myself. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, I want, if I want someone in my life that's going to contribute and make my life better and also support me and what I'm passionate about and be there along for the ride, which is very hard to do in Mm -hmm. in the radio lifestyle, Mm -hmm. then I've got to make a conscious decision to put them first as well. So, I mean, I, she, she has a great family relationship, but I don't. I don't have I a am your family. Well, yeah. I mean, I it's like whenever we're too. apart and come back together, it's like we were never apart. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, like, it's, it, I don't. And I, because it's because I put my career first since I was 18, even before then. I was a workaholic and it was always my way of running away from things. Mm-hmm. I mean, every single time I got a radio gig was running away from something, mm-hmm. you know, bad relationship or, you know, family stuff. Um, and then this last job was really tough, you know, it was a relationship and it was my job that I lost almost and, and a a close family member that I lost all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so it was like the perfect storm where I felt lost and now I'm like getting back around and I'm really enjoying flying just because I can leave it on the plane. Yeah. I walk away from the plane and I, I don't take my job with me. Yeah. Right. I I never really kind of thought about that. Do you ever see any of those people again? No, I, oh, yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe on the return flight. But it's not even about that because a lot of times like you take what they're giving you and internalize it. Mm-hmm. And I'm notorious for that. My entire life I've always been either ridiculed or or someone's been mad or someone criticized me and I internalized it mm-hmm. instead of just letting it bounce off me and letting myself learn from it. Right. So this job has taught me yeah, as a flight attendant to. Yeah, to like – let it let it bounce off of me and back to you. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. otherwise so, you just die. You just couldn't survive. Oh, right. I, I mean, even you know, today I said it on the plane to my coworkers, I was like, you know, if people, I don't think people understand that flight attendants are literally all they're looking for is for you to respect them. Mm-hmm. Like, right. at the, it, and it's not even bow down to us. It's, no, just it's show just the same respect that you that would you show, show the people to around you. Else. Yeah. Like, say excuse me right. when right. you cut me off in in the terminal because. It, it's like we don't exist sometimes. Right. Yeah. I mean, literally people in the airport and on our planes, it's like we're not there. And yeah. we're like, oh, wow, like we're blown away because people don't look at flight attendants as they used to. They don't look at flight attendants as a necessity and a need. They look right. at it like I deserve. And it's like, whoa, whoa, you don't deserve us serving you drinks just because you paid for your ticket. Right. Like, yes, your ticket is going to get you from here to there. But do you get this service on Amtrak? Do you get this service on a bus that you, yeah, you may pay a quarter of the price, but do you get Mm -hmm. that service? You don't. You get that service in the air and don't take it for granted or the people. And so I told them, I was like, you know, I'm so glad that all of us on this plane right now are stable because at the end of the day, even the, even the most like slimmest or slightest that someone is not stable I could imagine why they would want to kill themselves or why they would want yeah. to jump off the plane. I mean, not to be so morbid, but like people really treat people horribly, mm-hmm. right. especially flight attendants. And I've seen it and I've been a part of it. I mean, I'm sitting here going, wow, why do I take this? Yeah. I don't deserve this. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you don't deserve anything. Sit in your seat and just be. Because yeah. no, when you treat people that nasty and when you talk to people like that, I mean, they're, and I'm not going to lie, it's mostly women that act so mean to other women because mostly women flight attendants i sit there and i go wow how could you possibly talk to someone like that do you talk to your loved ones like that like they how could you do. do that they probably do i'm blown away like no one in my family has ever done that even when they're mad at me mm-hmm. you know what i mean they, they've they yelled at me but they've never treated me like that never mind a complete stranger like right. how do you act like that and it, 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 so it's no wonder. I mean, we literally get the blunt of that. Mm-hmm. But I'm thankful that this job has taught me to just leave it Kind there. of brush it off your shoulders. Yeah, because yeah. radio doesn't allow that. Yeah. I mean, well, it it's only because I think radio, you're more passionate about it. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like it means more. So You put anything, a piece of yourself yeah, in it. Right, yeah. But you yeah, also so, can't leave it at home every night. It's always with you. Yeah, you're always Yeah, but you're that a little person. bit more sensitive because you're opening up yourself a little bit yeah. more on radio, right? So mm-hmm. if when when that type of criticism or, or people say something, then you do take it personal. Well, yeah. Cause you're basically letting a third person into your relationship. 
you know, even if you're not in a relationship with someone, right. you're talking about your life, and now there's a third person involved in your relationship. Mm-hmm. Or letting the whole city into your life. Oh, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not you're just op- one person, but... And you're open to the ridicule. The listeners. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so many things came back to me And you're, you're still day. Jackson when you go to the grocery store. Yeah. And, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Or I go to the dentist. I mean, even that... I'm, I'm sitting in the dentist chair, and I hear my voice on the radio, and I'm right. like, oh, God, I better not talk. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want them to realize, but they do. Yeah, they all yeah, know yeah. it. And, I mean, it's cool, but at the same time, like, you start realizing, like, you just... We deserve more as radio personalities, pay and respect from our peers and our Absolutely. bosses, just because we literally do give a piece of ourselves, mm-hmm. and that's yeah, yeah. priceless. Well, you, and you also give up some of your privacy, yeah, right? Because you're talking about your life on air, you are tweeting and you're like Instagramming and saying the locations you're at, and mm-hmm. so you are giving a lot of your life out there, right? Because right. then what happens is the listeners will will be like, oh, okay, so, oh, I went to that spot too, and they kind of they're like, oh no, this person lives where I live, they're living the same lifestyle I am, so they trust your opinions, they trust mm-hmm. you know what you're saying, and so. Yeah, you're giving a lot, mm-hmm. and it's like, what, what are you, what are you getting back? Yeah, you it, know, mostly broken, broken heart because right. they let you go if all of a sudden one day you're not making the quotas or or just because it was just like a you. change. It was just a change. You these, know, it's just yeah. like these hey, are, we decided corpor- to change things. Yeah, these corporations are machines that are designed for profit. They don't care about you. Yeah. A given person might care about you, but the machine doesn't care about mm-hmm. you. And there's a thousand people lined up to take your job for less money. Yeah. Oh, and it's yeah, funny yeah. you mentioned the machine. I had a great conversation the other day with someone who's very interested in the music world. Um, and they were just, they were fascinated by, you know, some of the artists that are big right now and mm-hmm. their machines, you know, and I don't want to drop any names, but like the biggest female rapper and the biggest mm-hmm, singer, mm-hmm. like these people are, sure. machi- these yeah. are, a, a there's machine. an army of people that make that, that person who, yeah, yeah. which is real is they, but it's detrimental. The machine is detrimental to society because they're throwing messages out there that aren't good messages, but then they're they're perpetuating, oh, we want peace and love, and I love all my, and so it's it's kind of contradicting, and the machine doesn't understand what they're doing, the machine doesn't catch them and say, wait a minute, we yeah. want it, like so at the end of the day, the machine doesn't care, they're just seeing the checks roll in, right, and that's it, so like. I was telling my friend, I was like, it is a machine. I want to be a part of the machine. And so, um, I, I mean, because record labels are just literally machines. Throw, I mean, right. we haven't had a new, new, new artist, like a new pop artist icon that that is like a Mariah Carey or like a Celine Dion in the past two de- de- decades. Mm-hmm. We haven't. Like, oh, yeah, Katy Perry. Nope, she fell off. Ariana Grande, she's great. She's breaking records, but she's a young girl spreading a message about you know, being, you know, promiscuous in in my case, or at Mm -hmm. least the way I think about it. I love her. She's talented. She's cute. She's everything. But like, again, the message is not there. Mm -hmm. It's very like basic. Well, no, Mm -hmm. we got Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is something, but she's, she, she, um, she panders to the machine. So she, she knows her role and she's very genuine and very nice about it, but she's going to pander to the machine. Mm -hmm. She knows that she's a pop star. She's going to pander to it. Someone genuine. You know what I'm saying? Like someone who comes out like a Celine Dion. And I keep on bringing her name up because she has an amazing voice. Oh, yeah. But like it, she's the first that comes to mind that just literally saying what she felt. Mm-hmm. Or an Adele or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, I mean, wouldn't you say Adele was then? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, but she, you know, she started coming out with pop songs, you know. So yeah, like her records, I think, are always like her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what she's going right. on. Her yeah, heart she is. writes them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Versus, you know, but I think that as as far as like current day, like I mean, the two artists that I mentioned or didn't say their names, but everyone knows who they are. It's um, manufactured. It's all manufactured. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, she, she these two. Everything people, we hear on the radio is manufactured. Right, right. And there's and they mean so. So there's an artist that I absolutely love right now. She's a Christian artist, and I'm not super religious, but her name is Lauren Daigle, and she sounds exactly like Dell. And she's petite. She's like, she looks like you. Mm -hmm. And she has the most amazing voice and the most amazing message. Have you heard me sing yet? I have an amazing voice too. If you if you sound anything like how you talk to your cats, <laughs> yeah, no. Can we hear things? No. <laughs> but I, I wasn't awesome. prepared for this. <clears throat> I have to warm up my vocal cords. <laughs> there you go, moisten them up. <laughs> uh, I love it. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> next, her. she's getting self conscious. Next show. No, she's not self conscious. <laughs> Tom, get the sound. 
soundtrack ready. Here I come. <laughs> Get that. What is that? That thing that Lil Wayne uses? Uh, that little vocal thing. Uh, the um, what is that called? Auto-tune. Tech talk. Auto-tune. Is it oh, auto-tune? Uh, uh, vocoder. What well, it? what does he do on Tech Tom? It's auto tune. It, it's auto tune. Okay. Is yeah. it? Okay. All right. Yeah, because I mean, you need that. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I do not. Oh, I just I'm, gonna... I'm not ready to sing right now. <clears throat> hey, you know her birthday's wow. coming up, right? Uh, I think I know her birthday. My, well, my birthday's first. Okay. My birthday is less than a week <laughs> from now. Okay. And hers is uh, over a month from now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So she's going to come to Vegas. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to do something there, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. And then awesome. I have to, then we're going on vacation at some I point. I really want to go somewhere warm, please. Like ever since we got this snowpocalypse here in Seattle, I'm like, all I can think about is sun and my feet in the sand and just a tan and just like, give me away. And she's a Portuguese, so she gets like the good tan, oh. you know? She's always tan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're olive skinned. Yeah. Right, right, right. But I, even today I like went outside to take the dog, take a, the dog for a walk. And I was like, ah, oh, the sun. <laughs> The this, vitamin D. I did not want to get. <laughs> exactly. I did not want to go back in the house, and I was like, "This is, feels amazing right now." Like we, I am somebody who needs who needs the sun. Can we name this podcast Vitamin D? I mean, vitamin D. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Some? Anyways, you want some vitamin D? Okay. I told you I need some. All the yeah. guys were getting some. You know, oh yeah, I'll give, I'll give you. I'll give you some vitamin D. <laughs> I was gonna stop and get you some. I'll give you some vitamin D. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. I'll put on my tight jeans. I don't think it's necessarily the vitamin D he's talking about. He doesn't but... know what vitamin D is good for him or not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it might. They both, with... they both have their place. <laughs> yeah, I know where my vitamin D oh. goes. <laughs> oh, this is where it's it, from. Jackson, I learned top and bottom. <laughs> oh yes, okay. I did learn that. I didn't know. You hadn't heard I was that like, before. And I, well, no, I mean, we're talking about. I've known him for years, and he's like, "Oh, I'm a top and bottom." Blah blah blah. And I was like. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and she's gotcha. just like, I like being on top. <laughs> That's what she- do we need to? Do- I feel squished on the bottom. I just can't breathe. He's just way too big. I can't breathe. Excuse me. I tap him. Can we move? <laughs> Can we move? I can't breathe right now. You're sweating on me. You're breathing really hard. Don't you just rather have me on top? There's like more. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there going, "Damn, I wish she was over here because I'll take it on that." I was I'm just like, "Oh my god, I can't breathe." <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> Excuse me. Switch. Yeah. Totally two different tops. Shouldn't date such hairy guys. No. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not true. (laughs) That's not true. (laughs) She hasn't always dated. I mean, sometimes she likes the Harrys, but Mm -hmm. she she hasn't. Mario was not hairy. No, he didn't have any hair. Neither was George. He shaved it. (laughs) He was a stripper. So so metro. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was probably smoother than you. You. No, because when the hair grows back, it's all prickly, and I don't like that when it's rubbing against my soft skin. And this is like, oh my god, like don't princess. shave it then. No, because it, then it gives me like a rash and stuff. This is of, why she's single. Yeah, <laughs> no. reason four hundred and twelve. I have soft skin, it's way down and they the shave their chest, and they're rubbing up against me, and I'm like, oh my god, what is this? Like a rash, and it's from the hair. And I was like, just let the hair grow, man. I just can't oh deal with gosh. this right now. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well it's just, even, it goes for your beard too when they shave, and then you just oh, you might as well just go out. to the nursing home now. I should. <laughs> Right. Can I borrow your cane, Jeff? She's got she's got a lot more bitching to do before she gets to the <laughs> can, I borrow, can I borrow whoa. your cane, Jeff? You can. He just, he just I've got said that you like to bitch. I do bitch a lot. I meant oh, that in the most, you know. Yeah. Anyone who knows me knows I, I grow. Way. I wish there was like a, you know how there's the Jersey Shore? Mm-hmm. I wish there was like a Portuguese version of that. <laughs> that would be, oh my God. That would be awesome. Yeah. All the Malasadas. Malasadas from, <laughs> from uh, New Bedford. <laughs> <laughs> Molasada's from New Bedford. Oh my goodness! Oh, I love man. it. <laughs> so you fly uh, back tomorrow? Yeah, I'm flying all over. Yeah, uh, whatever. All right. I'm gonna be in Vegas for my birthday though, so okay. you gotta be there. I'll do my best. Yeah. It's less than a week. Yes. Nice. Guess how old I'll be. Yeah. Mm, I think you told us. <gasps> oh man, I'm bad at keeping secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Although it, I think it's eight and a half, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay, good, good. good. Don't want to cheat Whoa. yourself. Don't sell yourself short. I'm not talking He's about me, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but what? Wait, what? 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 <laughs> How did you come up with that guess? I just guessed. Oh, okay. Oh, well, look at his hands. What? So you're going What's your shoe hands? size? <laughs> uh, eleven. Yeah, so about, probably about eight, just over eight, really? or around the eight mark. Okay. And that, yeah. I you would know. never look at it. I'd be like, dude, this is the <laughs> size or whatever. I have heard women talking about me like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, but I don't, I don't think that. I don't know. I, so I've dated a few sh- tall, skinny guys or uh-huh. whatever, and they're 
Like, <laughs> that's bad. It is weird how that can happen sometimes. <laughs> Tall and skinny. He's trying to be modest. This is him being modest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, shorter guys. It's funny how that can happen sometimes. Yeah. Just how there can be no correlation. What between ethnicity are anything. you? Uh, I don't know. Redneck. Uh, redneck He's in from German. Kentucky. I don't know. You haven't done that thing? I haven't. You were, okay. Have you? No. Have you, you haven't done it? I haven't done it either. Oh, a new, a new podcast. Did you, Um, which one are you talking about? Just to know... What is that one that's like out? Like 23andMe? Yeah, 23andMe is. 23andMe, though, doesn't that tell you if you have other siblings and stuff that have taken this test as well? I think it's 23andMe. If they've and taken me. it and if they've opted to have their information shared, yeah. yes, you can find so out. So did I tell you about – can I tell I, you about this story? Yes. So my friend calls me up and she's like, oh, my God, you're never going to believe this. And I'll be like, what? She's like, do you know so-and-so? I said, yeah. She goes, she, she is my boyfriend's sister. And I was like, wait, what? And so mm-hmm. she took one of those DNA tests. And found out that there was um, that that she was like part. So she she knew she was Italian, but she was also like forty percent whatever Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. And then that these people came up with this last name in that same area with the same. So she started uh-huh. investigating and found out that she had like she found out who her father was. She never knew who her father was. She found out that she had like four or five other siblings. Like it was crazy. The stuff Mm. that I'm like, what? And then on another one, this one, I don't know her. I don't know. She's a, she's on the radio. Um, but I don't know her personally. She did one of those 23 and me DNA tests. And she found out that she had siblings as well. It's like four or five. Mm. Right. She calls up her mom and she's like, mom, why didn't you tell me? why, Why didn't you tell me I had brothers and sisters? And mom's like, I didn't know. And she's like, what do you mean you didn't know? Who's my dad? Why didn't you tell me? Turns out that she was a child of a sperm donor. Yeah. Jeez. So now she's currently just flying around meeting her siblings. Like, Because she's got dozens and dozens of them? I don't know oh. how many in all, but those are the only ones. So you got to think about it. Her siblings are the ones that decided to A, take the test and then release the results. So when you send it in and they, you have similar DNA to obviously mm-hmm. your siblings, they'll be like, these people could be or, or are mm-hmm. your brothers and sisters. She's like, why do I have so many? And she found out. And now I don't know what her mom told what a her. Trip. Yeah, I don't know what her mom told her as far as like who her dad was. But can you imagine? This begs the question though. That's I, scary to me. If I'm a sperm donor, how many people get my sperm? I don't know. Don't I don't think know? they tell you, like, do they? Right, they don't but, tell you, oh, so, we just we want... just shot a few more out to somebody else. I thought it was only once every time you donate sperm. No, yeah, but if she has all these brothers and sisters, he that guy must be shooting every day. Yeah, but you get no, paid for it. You, you get paid for it. So yeah, imagine like saying. so Probably. imagine he the 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 sperm donor went, I don't know, ten times, right? I mean, I, how long does sperm live? Number one. Well, they freeze right. it. But yeah, you could give one sample, I think, and they could impregnate it. Can they? A, I mean, I don't yeah, know. Or do they just right? let you, do it once and that's it? Because I don't know. I, I think, but I guess I don't really know. That's I don't why know I'm either. asking, because in one like you know, ejaculation yeah. or whatever, there's millions of sperm. So yeah. like you could legit have millions of kids. But if you get a sperm, yeah. so, but if you go in and you get a, a sperm donor, do they just inject one? No, they inject a couple, right? To make right. sure that the egg gets. Egg. Right, right. Yeah. This is an interesting I don't know. It is hey, here's the question. Does the donor get paid per sample he no. gives or per baby uh, he makes? I thought no. it was per, it's per sample. Per sample. Because he, gets, he doesn't. So they just give you some money and then you never know if it gets yes. used yeah, because, or how right. many times it he gets used. He can't control who they put it in and, right. they, and who, who they put that in. They don't know if it's going to match or do anything. So or they if can't it's actually going to happen if right. the person's going to get pregnant. Right. But right. I'm going to be donating. Mm. <laughs> Like, wait, are you I donating? pointed to you. <laughs> oh, I was like, wait a minute. Is this something new? You're going to be a sperm donor? <laughs> well, I mean, she, me. yes. We, we'll have way yeah. better looking babies than you. My mom Bruno. will probably be happy. She'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, he's cute. Yeah, he's so much better than Bruno. That's the what she would is, say. Yes. The real question is. <laughs> At least is, he's got nice teeth. That's what she yeah, would say. Yeah, but these are fake. These are fake. No, but he, I'm just saying. Okay. She, she would be happy. I'll be like, hey, mommy. <laughs> Yeah, you remember my friend uh, that worked in the radio? radio. <laughs> oh yeah, the new, oh yeah, yeah, yeah the, the grandmother like ninety something. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. yeah right. I'm gonna have his baby. Oh, the one that. Wow. Oh. Wow. Okay, that's fine. I take care. I take care of the baby. That's what she would say. I take the real, care. The say, real question is, uh, would you do it in a laboratory or would you guys just handle it I don't yourself? Know. I would do it professionally. 
I'm not going to sit here with a turkey I don't know if that answers the question. Does that mean that you're the professional (laughs) injecting you from injecting me professionally? No, I mean, like, I wouldn't take a turkey baster and, like, say, okay, spread your legs, girl. Like, I don't think I've seen you. But you also wouldn't take I've only seen you talk. Wait, have you ever been with, have you ever been with? Yeah, maybe. You have been with Mm -hmm. a girl? Mm Mm-hmm. I think you told me you called me one Mm -hmm. time. Were you drunk? Yep. Yeah, yeah, you told me. (laughs) <laughs> and something And you else. said you just weren't <laughs> but, but you were just weren't into it. What? You said you weren't into it. Well, I think there was like a like a goal at the end of it, like a guy. Right. <laughs> so like I wanted to get to the guy. Uh, okay. <laughs> so. But I mean, did you you didn't enjoy it is what I'm saying. No. And the next day, like you just don't feel right. No, you don't know what's on your face. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, <laughs> like at least <laughs> <laughs> Well, because what like, you do when you're finished with a guy? Uh, yeah, I mean, because you know, you're like, okay, yeah, he sat on my face last night. <laughs> but <laughs> TMI, right? No, no. I mean, uh, well, suddenly I'm confused then. Well, it, I can help know. you with that. All right. <laughs> eight, eight and a half. Eight and a half. <laughs> so I guess the the answer to that question is you'd want to take it to a laboratory. Yeah. Okay. I, well, because the first I would do that and then they would handle it properly and then they would put it in properly okay I what, if, what if they're putting I, it in d you wouldn't just want to put it in yourself uh, no d can <laughs> she can go and do I'd that be like, give me that baster Come on. <laughs> i'll do it, I'll do it. what the fuck that, so, <laughs> so but i think too i think in this case i'm not sure but like i think they have to get the woman aroused as well before they inject because oh, i don't because I, that helps the woman actually. Well, we could find some asshole to help now, with that. Now, if they do, if they do. <laughs> oh my god! He thinks he's funny by calling out your type. No, but it is funny. She, she I calls, think it's amusing. To be fair, she calls them uh, assholes. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. Yeah. It is funny. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. We have that type of relationship. You could say okay. that. She right. calls them assholes. I'm like, well, you should stop dating him. She's like, no, I'm just going to keep doing it and yeah, bitch yeah, about yeah. it. She, no, because she likes control. Right. So, and I going back to that, she loves control. So, like, if the bigger the asshole, the better, because she will control them yeah. and make mm-hmm. them be puppies by the end. Uh, uh. She will. But I also, I also <laughs> think there's a more sensitive part of D that we you oh, don't duh. that oh, only yeah, exists yeah. when when she once she gets into that relationship, then she doesn't let go of it easily, and she'll put up with a lot. I think but she'll, she'll, let, she'll, she'll let go of it actually, if it calls. Uh, I actually put up with a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do. There's times sometimes, where I'm like, yeah, because I have to should. hear a lot. Right. Yeah, right. but uh, sometimes I'm like, why did I stay in that situation? Like, come uh-huh. on. Yeah, but like, you're smart. I, I'm this. not not to like blow up your spot here, but like, as badass and confident as she is mm-hmm. here and in every other setting, when she in a relationship, she you know, there's a little insecurity in that D somewhere. Yeah. Oh yeah. A and side. I think everybody even, has their yeah. insecurities. And I think even more so like now, like since she's had that job situation happen, there's even more. Oh like, yeah, you get the wrong ones, they sneak in, and you're like, yeah. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Let that one pass. Go on, really? You're I mean, like, she told me about a recent one, and she was just like, nah, nah, like, the, yeah, like I let this happen. I let it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she knows she did. Mm-hmm. So like, right. But, but that's what I'm saying. She's, but there were times where she really convinced herself that that's what she wanted, and then. I'm great then, at convincing myself. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the yeah. donuts that you guys ate. Yeah. 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 She really didn't want them, but she's good at convincing sure. herself that she right. did. No, I know I want my donuts. <laughs> like, I, uh, let's be honest. Like, if I want, if, when I say I don't know, am I, the, something, I'm, I'm, I think I'm not the better friend in the room. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm, it, listen, when it comes to me and donuts, like, you can't if it's a if it's a Sunday, a Saturday or Sunday, and those donuts are in front of me, it's really hard for me to say no. Well. Or I'm sorry, even if they're not in front of me, we're going to <laughs> look for them. For me, it's tacos. Really? Oh, yes, tacos. please. Uh, tacos. Yeah, he loves he loves tacos. Yeah, sweets are like eh. Some of them, are, <sighs> I mean, I'm over it. Mm-hmm. I love I love donuts. I just I do. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I mean, look at her. Mm, it seems to be working. Yeah, <laughs> donuts once a week. It's fine. That's gonna keep you happy and in shape, and just do it. Like that's my motto. Whatever. You See, know? he's digging this. He's digging this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I so, just, I did the donuts keep her happy. So oh, ha- wow. happy D, happy Jeff. <laughs> I, I, I'll drag oh, him out. Alrighty. I actually sent him a link to um, this, new, this new donut spot that I found in Seattle. I actually saw it on like, yeah. it was like on raised, the, raised donuts. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this is our next spot. Next spot. Hey, you're not working out though. So lay off the donuts. I am. But trying. he never gets fat though. I'm, he is that ass is. I'm getting, I'm fatter than I was when I was working out before I hurt my knee. That ass I don't is. think you're fat though. Like. I'm not fat, but I'm not. I mean, I'm soft instead of. You just feel softer. Fit. I get it. 
Yeah, like when hey, he's not going to squish you if he's on like, top. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be on fucking top because he can't do any work on the bottom. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, I he could. Anything. I mean, if he's got hips, he can thrust. He's yeah. got a butt, so it'll hold him up, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Clench him. <laughs> I can almost get on my knees now. <laughs> Actually, I did. Actually, the gay I... joke I have for that. <laughs> Spread them. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> See, I like her. She's a good wing woman. She is. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we've got to hit the gay bars. I was just gonna say Seattle. we should. Next time you're here, that's it. We're not gonna. We're not gonna record. We're gonna hit up Capitol Hill and like just drop. You have in. to come with. Wear your tightest jeans. All right. Yeah. Don't wear that. He shirt. brought me to. He actually brought me to a gay <laughs> club bar. What was the name of that place? Uh, I don't remember. He'd be a good gay guy. I would I would well, we I would probably hit there. on him if it, if he was in a gay club. I would hit what on him. What was the name? You don't remember? I don't we remember. Were, like we went to go grab drinks on Oh, Capitol. Pony. Yes, yes. All righty. What yeah. a, a typical name for a gay bar. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, we went there. <laughs> That's in time. Seattle. Uh, what I love yeah. about it though is like oh, the drinks are so cheap. It's like amazing. Oh, because And they, the people are so nice. They're, uh, I people, mean, uh, yeah. Well, gays are cheap even though they have money. <laughs> No, really. Yeah. They like to spend their stuff on fancy things, not and they, but they like to drink every day. So you can't drink every day and get nice things. So you get cheap drinks and you get nice uh, things. Never yeah. thought about it like that. Yeah, happy hour. Plus, everyone just wants to get laid. So as quickly and cheaply right. as possible, uh, and as often. As yeah. Often. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, like I said, if he was in a gay bar, I would hit on him. He. Would you think he was sh- gay? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, if he didn't have this shirt, he was just wearing all black. He usually wears black. That's his attire. Is that the, the, I'm wearing all black. <laughs> but like I, I said, then you would think he was gay if he was wearing all black. No, um, but his it, when he wakes up, it's like, which black T-shirt should I put on? <laughs> like, that's his thing. That's, that's a joke I tell him all the time. I'm like, oh, yep. you're wearing black it's again. It's slimming. Well, so. uh, I'm a musician. I'm always on stage, and you kind of got to wear black on stage, so I end up just wearing yeah, all Yeah, but if you're on stage, don't wear black. If you're backstage, you wear black. Am I right? Well, you uh, know, as a hand? performer, stage black hand. is... Black is often the uniform on stage. What well. kind of music do you play? Whatever people want to pay me to do. These yeah, but drums. I, I, I play Im- drums. He's a rock, drummer. pop. I couldn't imagine Drum playing player. a Bruno Mars song and wearing all black. Like, oh, like I got like a nice black dress shirt, black oh, jeans. Black. Oh, righty. Still black. Okay. It fits. It fits well. It looks right. good. It's like, oh, what's I would do well at the gay bar. It feels. It fits better than that shirt. Yeah. Okay, dude. I was sitting on my ass in my pajamas before you guys came over. But you knew we were coming. You no, could have put another oh, yeah. shirt on. That's the same <laughs> no, I did. shirt he's worn in the last three this... weeks. I've seen him. I know. I, bet, <laughs> I, I, have, right? a, I have a wardrobe problem bet, right now. <laughs> I bet you it smells. Hey, listen, I'm on the road a lot, and I've worn this sweater probably three times in the past 10 days. Mm-hmm. But it's been washed every time. So, I mean, it's it's traveling. But you, this is your house. You have a plethora of other choices. No, he doesn't. It's all black. <laughs> it's my house, and it's the radio. That's why I wear whatever I want. Okay. It's all black. But listen, we look hot. You do. Okay. We're all wearing black, actually. Yeah. We're all black. It's slimming. <laughs> it is. It's slimming. All right, D. So when am I going to see you next? I don't know. I like vitamin D, so uh, okay. I'll come back for more of it. You want some more of your vitamin D? Hey. Uh, come back and more. Uh, Jackson, let everybody know your Instagram. and. Oh, cool. Um, at Radio Jackson on Instagram. Mm-hmm. It's got the blue check, so verified. Twitter is on air Jackson. On air Jackson. Blue yeah. check there as well. I just start with Jackson and then you show up just because obviously I'm following you and stuff. Yeah. And we're friends. Yep. How many followers do you have now? I don't know. I was trying to beat you for a while there. Like it was a healthy competition because <sighs> she was in a way bigger market than I was. Yeah. And so here I am. Yeah. Oh, come visit again. We'll take you to the uh, to Capitol Hill. We we'll have Ooh. some fun there. And we got we'll to take more him stories too. to tell. We got to take him. I want to dress him. Oh please! I would do that. Yes. yes. Are we going shopping first? Yes. All right. We're, I wanna, with I, your money, not ours, okay? You under, you under, <laughs> <laughs> no, it depends on where we go. I'll get him a shirt. I don't know. But um, can we find me a blazer? But. No, no, now no, you're getting no, pricey, no, 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 no. okay? Uh-uh. Bring it back. Now he's getting pricey. Look at Not that. Not even. Like, why would we get you? A, we're going to a gay club. We need to show your assets off. Okay. A blazer's I'm not so, going to do uh, that. All right. Assets, you're saying by just like his jeans, his butt? No, but like, I mean, he, he you have some muscle, right? In uh, your yeah. arms. Okay. So like, it's just, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's bad when, when <laughs> muscles are bigger than yours. <laughs> uh, yep. But I, I, no, I, I have a feeling. I want to dress him up for him to get like hit on. I want to see how he how he reacts. But then what are you gonna do? Get like a tighter shirt or something? No, no, no. Or... I'll, trust me, I okay. got something. All right, I'll leave that up to you. Something prepping in mind. 
Okay. Yeah. And then I'll give him the, uh, well, I'll get the outfit that it's like for the women and you get the outfit yes. for the men. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. This, okay. So and then the, are we going to a, a two different clubs? We then? should then. Yeah. yeah. We're, and we're creating we episodes around okay. this. Yeah. We yeah, have yeah. to so. do episodes around this. All right. Yeah. And All right. we'll see what works. All right. Yes. Yeah. Jeff's turn. Just make sure I can walk by then. Oh, I mean, if, when I'm done with you, you won't be able to walk. <laughs> <laughs> Antsy. <laughs> <laughs> We're ending it there. Thanks for tuning in to Deanna Cruz Unfiltered. Hey, thanks for listening to Deanna Cruz Unfiltered. Don't forget to leave a review or a five-star rating. Every review helps more people discover the show. And you can find my social media links right above. Follow me. It's just at Deanna Cruz. 